Hello everyone, it's me, Nikki. We're back to the old way because I noticed the book was um, backwards when you horizontally flip it. So that would have been pretty headache inducing to watch. So I'm here with my um, October wrap up. Um, I didn't read as many as I wanted to, but I did read some, a few. So I still have a nice big pile of books, but that's going to get taken care of. So we'll start with um, this one. This is The Complete Tales of Winnie the Pooh by A.A. A. Milene. Milene? Yeah. This is the Barnes and Noble edition. Uh, technically, I finished it November 1st at like midnight, but I started it on the 31st, so I'm counting it in October. Thank you very much. Um, it was um adorable and i enjoyed every instance of it i love this little map i mean look and there's my boy here's my boy eeyore all the way over here he's my little baby i love him he's a lot more sassy in this than i realized like in the cartoon he's just like okay but in this one he like talks back so it was cute adorable perfection and i loved it Ugh. And so I don't have notes on that because it's Winnie the Pooh. But next, I do have some notes for these. I just have to find them. Um, okay, we'll start with um, this one. Victoria Holt on the night of the seventh moon. I DNF'd this uh, maybe about halfway through. Um because of the trigger warnings there's miscommunication there's gaslighting there's death of a baby there's a controlling love interest and that's just in the first part um so it's about helena trant who goes to the black forest and meets a man maximilian who she marries, meets, falls in love, and marry in like a very short time period. They live together in like this little castle. She gets pregnant, and then she goes back home. And they're like, "Oh, honey, no, you got raped in the forest." They said like assaulted. They mean raped. Like you got raped in the forest. That never happened. So then they take her to a doctor, and they tell her she meets somebody, a woman there who I know comes into play later because I looked in the back. And they both have babies, and they both say they died. And the other woman's baby probably isn't dead either. But they say, Helena, you had a little girl, and she died. And then she goes home, and she's about to marry this, this guy after years and years. And then she meets someone she met in Germany, because it's Black Forest. And she goes, oh, I remember you. And then she's telling everybody in her English town she had a baby. And then she's like, fuck it. We're going to become a uh, governess to Maximilian. And then he's got a wife and maybe kids. I'm not sure. Turns out everybody lied to her, to him. Uh, her son wasn't a girl and he isn't dead. Shut up, Phil. Don't try to stop me ranting about this. So I was like... No, I can't read it. It's supposed to be like a gothic romance. And I'm like, no, it's fucking trash. And I liked the other Victoria Holt book I read, so... I don't know, but that one was garbage. I don't recommend it. I mean, if you can stomach all the gaslighting, I guess. Um, next is The Dream Spheres. Um... This is book five. It was supposed to be six, and I think I said this about um, the Pearl Saga. You can tell. Like, the way it ends. Erilyn. Uh, how do you say your name? Show it to me. Erilyn, yeah, and Danilo are set to go after someone, and I assume that's what the sixth book was about, them going after someone. So... Uh, the first book is about Dan and, and Erlen meeting. And then there's two books where it's just Erlen and one where it's Danilo. 
and then one where it's not either of them, and then they're back together. And it's also part of um, the Harpers. So, you know, they're probably in those other books as well, and stuff is mentioned um, um, in here that I think is probably in a Harper book. So Danelle Erlen is a half-elf, and she has the... She's called Erlen Moonblade because that's what her sword is, and it glows when there's shit happening, specifically to elves, and then she goes off and saves the elves. That's, like, her whole job. Um... And they love each other. And this one is where they basically get married and Danilo says fuck you to his family. His family is fucking trash, by the way, in this book. Um, his mom and his dad, trash. Uh, I think he has a sister who's nice, but I don't think she shows up here. Um, and Danilo has magic. And he does this cute little magic trick for Erlen, but it goes awry. And she's like, what are you doing? And he goes, that wasn't meant to happen. And then Erlen's Moonblade is, like, not working. And it has to do with these dream spheres, which are spheres that have um, dreams in them. And then, like, other people can see your dreams. It's kind of confusing, and it has to do with, like, an elven... Um, gem, and if you hold the elven gem, you can become evil. It's a whole thing. Um, so, there is stuff from the other books. There's blood and death. And it was a really good uh, part of the series. Like, when I first started reading it, I was not into it. But then, like, once the mystery part is going, it's really good. Um, and I'm actually really sad there isn't a book six. Because I would like to have known what happened. Um, next up is The Apothecary Rose by Candace Robb. It is an Owen Archer mystery. So Owen is Welsh and he's an archer. And that's why his last name's Archer. That's how you get last name. Um, it's 1363 and two pilgrimages, pilgrims, not pilgrimages. Two pilgrims are dead of an herbal remedy. So the archbishop, who's a real guy, who doesn't matter, uh, he sends, he's like, Owen, go figure it out. And Owen's like, okay, I'm an archer, not a spy, but I'll do my best. And he's not an archer anymore because he lost an eye. So he has a kick-ass eye patch, but his eye still hurts. But he's handsome. Um... And then there's an apothecary, Nicholas Wilson, who's sick, so Owen goes in undercover as his apprentice. But he's actually apprenticing under Wil Nicholas's wife. Um, what's her name? Oh, dear. Uh, Lucy. Um, and there is... An archdeacon who's an asshole. There is a potter, Digby, who turns out to be not such an asshole. And then his mother, Magda, who's a river woman. And she's like... Like, they're Norman-ish, still. They're French, whatever. But she's like pre-Norman, like Viking kind of stuff. She's amazing. I love Magda. Um, there is mentions of rape in the past. There is uh, botched abortion. There is murder in blood. There is miscommunication. There is fire and trying to burn people alive. And there is drowning. Um, and the misogyny, which I expected a lot of, only really comes from the archdeacon and everybody else. Like, because there's a woman who runs an inn, and even though her husband owns it, he's like, no, she's in charge. And everybody knows she's in charge. So that's A+. plus. So it's only from him. And, um, there is a prologue. And in the prologue, you know who murdered, um, the pilgrims. Because it's pretty much stated that this guy, this person, I was going to say, this guy, this guy did it. The rest of the book is basically, 
Owen trying to figure it out and you screaming at Owen and then trying to figure out why he did it. So, A+, plus, adored it, loved the characters, loved the woman who runs the inn, loved Lucy, loved Magda, loved um, the, the people at where Brother Wolfston works, love Owen, love his archer friends, adore it. Ugh, where am I now? Oh, yes. We'll start with this one. This is The Scarlet Pimpernel by Baroness Orksy. This is set in the French Revolution. Um, and there's anti-Semitism, unsurprisingly. And uh, there obviously this is the trope namer for a lot of things so there are all the tropes because they weren't tropes like this is it like um, the spy Sir Percy um, is the Scarlet Pimpernel you know that uh, his wife doesn't know it and so like there's a whole Batman and Superman and all the superheroes so it's just amazing I loved it a lot it's a pretty fast read the chapters are short and it really picks up like near the end um, this could even be a little when was it written 1905 this might have it's a little Sherlock Holmesy as well because of like Sherlock in the books was all disguise disguise and so is the Scarlet Pimpernel. So yeah, it's great. I recommend it. And that's like, this is technically the second one in um, the timeline or the third one in the timeline, but it's the first book she wrote. There's like a whole series about it. It's great. Uh, next we have Tarzan of the Apes. Again, um, probably a lot of trouble but like obviously uh let's see there's period typical racism um there's sexism for apes like the women apes like they're fucking apes i don't think like they know a male and a female but the woman's not gonna say clean up the fucking jungle so that's stupid um there's comedy relief like the two old guys in this are just dumb as hell um there is implied bestiality because Tarzan knows his dad is a human, but he thinks his mother is an actual ape. And, I, and it's like, because they didn't know that that couldn't actually happen. Like, if, disgustingly, if a man fucked a female ape, a human baby would not be conceived. So there's that. Um, Tarzan doesn't understand no from Jane because I think he wants to kiss her or something and she's like no and he's like I don't know what that means and he takes her off um, there's some cannibalism there's hanging there's sexism from and there's misunderstanding and spoilers they don't even end up together at the end of this book there's a sequel where they end up together it's like are you kidding me? So the movies have lied to us forever. I'm mad about that. And the last book I read was The Kingdom of Back by Marie Lu. This is about um, Manorel and Wolfgang Mozart when they were children. Um. Let's see. There's misogyny because their dad thinks Wolfgang. Wolfgang, is, I mean, Wolfgang picks up the uh, clav clavarel. What do they call it? The, the thing they played on that isn't a piano. Faster than his sister and he's composing in his head and he's writing it down quicker. Nanarel, who wants to compose, can't even do it because she's a woman. Wolfgang's like, what the fuck, just do it. So she does it in secret. Um, and of course, Wolfgang's younger, so he gets more attention. And when she turns 18, she has to stop. But I'm like, but her talent, what the fuck are you doing? 
Um, there is sickness. Wolfgang gets sick a lot. I guess he did in real life. He's pretty frail. Um, their father is a stage dad. He's also not a very good father to a Nanarel. Like, she fucks up near the beginning because of Wolfgang, and then he's like, I'm so disappointed in you. And then Wolfgang can do no wrong, and you're like, I will kill you. Um, and there's a bit of horror, like, maybe near the end or middle. Um, the Kingdom of Back was a place that Wolfgang and Nanrel made up, and in the book, it's a real place. And the prince laying there wants Nanarel to help him get to a castle. So she does. And then there's a person in that castle that the princeling then sort of like eats, like venom style. So that's like a little body horror or horror-y. Um, it's a bit of a surprise considering like the rest of it hasn't really been like that. Um, there's also, uh, they see the Queen of the Night, like, that's obviously where Mozart got it. She's in a cave underwater and her feet are in the ground, like, in the ground covered up by rocks and stuff, so that might be a little body horror -y too. Um, but this was amazing. I recommend you read it right the fuck now. Um... You feel awful for Nanarel and even Marie Lou. I believe, she says that she found it hard to believe that Nanarel didn't compose and that Mozart composed a lot of stuff very quickly. So in the book, it is not implied. It is heavily stated that it's not even stated. It's straight out said that Nanarel, when she wrote stuff, Mozart was printed under his name. It's in the book. I won't spoil that for you. Um, so that's what Marie Lou is saying. So and Mozart, lo like their brother sister stuff, is great. Little Mozart loves Nanarel. He thinks she's the best thing going. He's like, oh yeah, I can compose like sonatas and operas in my head. But have you heard my sister play the thing? So I really enjoyed that book, and I'm glad I bought it, besides the cover. Um, <laughs> and, um, yeah, I really liked it. Go read it now, now, now. That's all I have to say about that. So those are all the books I read. It was one, two, three, four, five, and a half. So, you know, not a lot, but that was pretty good. I do still have a very big pile over here. Oh well. Anyway, so those are the books I read in October. And, um, yes, that is everything. Um, I hope you're having a good day. I hope November is going well for you. And, um, I will see you all in the next video. Goodbye!